This is Jazz Casual, and I'm Ralph Gleason. And we've been listening to the music of Turk Murphy's San Francisco Jazz Band. Jazz has many faces, as I hope most of you know. And the music and the face of jazz with which we are concerned in this program is one that is uh, concerned itself with some of the older forms and melodies of jazz music. Turk, what was the name of that tune? That was a tune called 1919 Rag. It was... Uh, Originally a French march, but I can't pronounce the name. If I knew it, I could pronounce it. <laughs> <laughs> I think the reason the people in New Orleans gave it up originally was they probably couldn't, couldn't say it either. Does, it, does this tune date back to the early days of jazz? It dates back to the very beginning because, uh, as you and I discussed before at various times, there's very little music to go by when, when American jazz was first invented. So they, they picked up the marching bands, played from these little, little green books that they'd bought from the stores. They, mm -hmm. they had most of the European marches, of which one was a, was a high society, which about 10 people claimed. Mm -hmm. And this happened to be a, be a French march, which they later called 1919 for some reason. What, what, uh, what terms do you use to describe your music, the type of music, the style of music that Turk Murphy plays? Well, our terminology is sort of on, on the run at the present time. It seems oh. like, but, but we, we still call it traditional jazz. And uh, what do you mean by what do you mean by this? Traditional in what sense? Well, it's traditionally, in, in as much as as we've, it, it uh, f from the very beginning, it, you know, the, the form hasn't changed too much. It, it's not an experimental music. Ah. It, it's uh, it's uh, it, it it stays to a more of, of a form of its own, e even though the tunes change and and the type of playing, uh, the, well, the the bands will change from the technique of the individuals and in the, in, in the groups. Does the instrumentation uh, change very much? It, it does. You, uh, it has in the past many times, such as some, ex uh, some very strange instruments, uh, like serosophone, those things that, that mm -hmm. Sidney Bechet brought in. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, soprano sax uh, was one of Sidney's instruments, and that, that was, was not considered part of the original, original New Orleans type of band, I don't believe. Have you, have you tried to use any uh, uh, unusual instruments yourself in your band? Bob Helm plays a place soprano sax uh -huh. occasionally here. I've, I've tried a few things with not, not much luck. I, I have, seem to have enough of a struggle playing one these days. What, what uh, is the basic uh, repertoire that you have and that you use? Uh, what does it consist of? Well, we, we try to represent each, each one of the people we admire uh, to begin with. We try to represent uh, Joe Oliver, uh, known as King Oliver, represent Jelly Roll Morton, represent Louis Armstrong, many of the lesser ones, such as the Dodds Brothers, mm -hmm. and uh, many of the piano players. We represent ragtime to a certain extent, which we think <clears throat> some of the greater, greater ones were Scott Joplin, those people. Well, now, when you uh, say that you try to represent uh, the King Oliver Band, uh, I assume that you play some tunes that were associated with them. Uh, how do you go about doing this? Do you, do you go to the records for research on them, or what? We, we, uh, some of the tunes were, were not, a, not available we've gone to records on, but I've had a lot of luck in, in, the, in recent few years, I would say recent by the last five years. I, I've uh, got a lot, a lot of the original manuscripts of, of Oliver's tunes, ah. which, which uh, makes a little more sense, because in, in the Oliver band, it was, uh, the, the two cornets were quite obscure. They, they worked so closely together. You couldn't tell which was was the lead sometimes, mm -hmm. but by by being rep representative, I, I don't mean to play like these bands, uh. or ex uh, because we don't have the the same technique, the, don't don't have the same temperament, because uh, music itself is deals in, deals in temperament more than else. Mm -hmm. I mean, a band such as this is no different from from the modern jazz groups, and the the technique will differ, the personnel will differ, so this band sounds different. You can't. You can't, if you, if you start pl playing a series of notes put on, on a piece of paper, as they are, they, they, they wouldn't come out, no matter how you play them, so I like the original any, anyway, they wouldn't come out that way. So you're involved more in, in preserving a concept than, That's right. than an actual copy of something. But when I say uh, tunes representative of these various people, uh, the tunes that, that they've written, mm -hmm. uh, and, and we, we, we attempt to play these a little bit differently so, so as to give them our, our own personal touch, but, but we, we, we play them the way we thought they were meant to be played, on the, on, on, on the other hand. Now, if you don't uh, have available the sheet music to, uh, as you have been lucky with the Oliver tunes, do you then have to go to the record to find out? Well, of course, we, we had to go to the record in the very beginning to find out how ah, the music yeah. went. Yeah. So we've been forced to resort numerous times to, to, to the tunes themselves, because in some cases, the tunes were, were written by people, uh, just played by the people that, and were written down on, 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 the, on the spot. I doubt if many were, were published or not. Yeah. 
So you can't, you can't always get, get written music this way. But in, in this case, uh, as we did when, when we first tried to pattern ourselves, we something to go by, we, 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 we go back and find the tune this way from the records. Do you also add to your repertoire original tunes composed by your own? Uh, we do this. Bob players. Helm and myself are composing most original tunes now. We have, between Bob and myself, we have about 45 or 50 tunes. Are these in the style of of, uh, of, of the style of the original band? Because they, I see. this the style is is quite varied. It's various color various uh, colors of tunes. I mean, the, each uh, the, uh, each person that writes one has has a different concept too. Yeah. Uh, I think they should sound. We try, try to keep the music alive rather than let it remain static, because we're we're open to a lot, a lot of criticism if we if we play a thing much the same as it always was. Yeah. Of course, we, the the truth is that we couldn't help to do this in the first place. Sure. It would be impossible. Now I understand that one of the uh, tunes you're going to play for us now is a composition of one of the members of your band. Yeah, Bob Helm wrote this next tune. What is it called? Ted? It's called Daybreak Blues. Daybreak Blues. I won't delve into Bob's personal life. It's just, it's just, it's just, <laughs> <laughs> he probably wrote it at about 5 a.m. Like <laughs> well, other than, other than the prison lower tones, is there anything special about the structure of this tune that you wanted to point out to us? Well, this, this is not, it's, it's not a blues. Ah. Uh, it's, it's a, uh, it has two, st uh, two strains, neither of which are blues, and Bob, Bob just happened to call it Daybreak Blues. It, it would give uh, a listener a, a blues sound, a certain extent, yeah. except that it's a little bit faster than, than, than the concept of blues, a little, little, little faster tune, but... He happened to call it Daybreak. this, this, but but the, the form is not, not not quite accurate. Fine. Well, can we hear it then? I'd like to go ahead. Wonderful. I'd love to hear it. We're going to hear Turk Murphy, the San Francisco jazz band, with Bob Helm on clarinet, Bob Neighbor on trumpet, Pete Clute on piano, Harold Johnson on tuba, and Lloyd Biasi on drums, and a composition by Bob Helm, which, although it is not a blues, is still called Daybreak Blues.
For our next tune, we'd like to do one that has a, some strange qualities. This was written by the great King Oliver, but the, he didn't record this. The only person who did record it in, in those times was Jelly Roll Morton. This, our, our version of this features a vocal by Bob Helm. Here's one, one called Dr. Jazz. This next one really is the blues. This is one called the Terrible Blues. To go, show you the length we go to, to change the way tunes sound, this was, in the, in the original records of this, was, it featured clarinet. We go to the opposite end, end of the scale. This one features some tuba work by Shorty Johnson. The Terrible Blues. Thank you. 
Our next one, we'd like to throw in one for Ralph. I know he likes some of the Morton tunes. This one is one in, in which Jelly Roll Morton used a bit of comedy along with some sound effects. We wouldn't dare to go this far because people would tab us as, as Spike Jones in a minute. But here's one for you called Sidewalk Blues. <laughs> 